Okay. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Ledwell and this is The Inspiration Show and today we're actually going to be talking about self-esteem, how to build self-esteem and specifically with children. So please welcome my guest, the amazing Mr. Do uh, Dr. Joe Rubino. How are you Joe? <laughs> I'm great Natalie. How are you today? Absolutely fantastic. Um, so why don't we start first of all with, uh, with your story and how you got into doing what it is that you do because you are kind of like the self-esteem expert out there. Well, thanks. Well, when I was 36 years old, I found myself as a very resigned dentist. Although I was successful by society standards, I made a lot of money, I had lots of patients, had 15 employees and seven full-time dentists working in my practice. I had the sense, the intuitive sense, is this all that there is to life? I had lost my passion for practicing and I had this intuition that there was something else awaiting me there. But at the time, I was an extreme introvert. I had very few friends, and I was just not living the good life, even though I made a lot of money. So long story short, I reinvented myself. I entered into a one-year personal development program that became a 10-year program. And during that 10-year process, not only was I coached to live from a declaration of the qualities that I wanted to be known for, the qualities that I wanted to live with passion in my life, as opposed to the default, which was, what I thought I was dealt with, the hand that I that I was dealt with, which I thought was devoid of gifts, devoid of passion, and was full of shoulds in my life. So I have since now coached thousands of people myself and over the last 23 years have identified the same elements, the same foundational principles that allowed me to reinvent my life and now I teach those to other people. Right, and I'm assuming that it doesn't take 10 years for you to uh, get results with your, with your students. <laughs> no, it actually can be as quick as flipping a light switch. When you get, gather the principles that are important for living on purpose, having a positive expectation for your life, and stop living out of the addictive emotional response to life. You know, we're all reactive to life. We, we react in ways that give us a fix, a fix of anger, which was my already present fix, indignant anger, uh, that happened when I was a little five-year-old kid playing at the schoolyard. Some teenagers came around, tossed me around like a football, hit my head on the concrete, went home crying. At that point, I decided I was small and insignificant, people were mean and cruel, and the world was a dangerous place. And I lived the first 36 years of my life out of that mistaken interpretation. And so what I've since come to realize is that we all are addicted to things that we made up about ourselves and about others and about the world oftentimes it don't support us so if we can identify how we're wired whether we're angry all the time whether we're addicted to sadness or whether we're addicted to most prominent addictions we now can manage them in the moment and we can create empowered interpretations that support us to live our best life and support us to identify and share our gifts with the world. Absolutely. And it's amazing how the, um, the events in our childhood that affect us the most are those that have the strongest emotional charge around. So I can imagine how that one event for you was, was so powerful and life-changing and, and life-altering. So, mm -hmm. um, so I have this, the question that I ask of all of my uh, teachers that teach this type of message. Is it important for us to go back and clear and do a clearing around that event before we can move forward? Or can we just focus on moving forward and, and implementing tools now? That's a great question. Uh, for those people that can clearly recall an event, it's helpful to reinterpret that event in a way that has empathy and compassion and forgiveness and gratitude for the experience because every event in our life has contributed to us, whether it was painful and whether we appreciated it at that time or not. But for many of us who can't remember these early upsets, it doesn't matter because we have learned to relive the same upset dozens and then hundreds and then thousands of times, literally, over the course of decades. So the, the work that we do supports people to clear up whatever whatever it is their life, their interpretations, their mindset, just by looking at when their last upset was, whether it was this morning with a spouse, yesterday with a coworker, or you know, last month with a friend. It doesn't matter because we all live out of pictures of how we see the world. 
And as long as we are living in an upset, we constantly are misinterpreting life in a way that doesn't support us. So it's helpful if we can go back to our childhood to complete, but if not, we can complete right now. We can complete moment by moment and interpret life in a way that empowers us as opposed to shuts us down. Yeah, I, I think it's also, like you said, for every event that happened that we feel, you know, has, has changed us or influenced us, there is, you know, for me, I always say there's like 20 different versions of every story. Yes. And uh, you, there's all, for everything that happens to us, there's always a gift that comes from it. And, you know, it, it serves you more to choose the version of that story that empowers you rather than one that disempowers you. So, yeah. so yeah. So let me talk about the, the kids thing, uh, mm -hmm. so the work that you're doing with children. So, are you saying that we can now try and like nip this stuff in the bud um, while children are still, you know, young at age? Yeah, I, I ask you this question, Natalie. What would it be like if we could empower kids from the get-go, where they learned from the beginning that they were magnificent, that the world was an exciting adventure, that every day provided them with new opportunities? opportunities for learning and growing and experiencing and they learn to love the process of life and they realize that it's all good and it's all there for their edification it's all there for their soul growth it's all there to make them more of the person that they were destined to become and they're always magnificent so we're going to differentiate between bad behavior and being a bad person the two are very different so when kids make mistakes that's a good thing because now we can learn from the mistake we can look at what worked about what happened and what was missing that if put into place would support them to move forward so we can debrief all the time we can partner children with their parents with their teachers with their grandparents with their coaches with all the adults in their world and with their friends as well and we can now immerse them in the concept that it's all good, it's all there for their benefit, and their job is to analyze their life, to look at what's working in their life, and to look at what's missing that if put into place would support them. And when they can embrace problems, when they can look for the gifts in those problems, when they can realize that they are magnificent, and that every child is magnificent in a different way, and we all have emotional gifts, emotional intelligence, and when we can tap into the, those gifts, we now have the ability to contribute to other people, to contribute those gifts to the world. So we can live large, we can live with the idea of what our life purpose is from a young age, from the age of being a child. And we can create a vision for our life, a vision that says these are the qualities that I want to be known for. So when an upset happens, when something disrupts a child's calm, steady, peaceful existence, we as adults can look with the child, okay, well what happened? What did you make up about that? What is good about that? What questions can we ask that will empower us to move forward? What can we learn as far as lessons are concerned? And how can we use this going forward in a way that not only benefits us, but benefits others? So that we look at every day being a little bit better than we were yesterday. And every month being a little bit wiser, more empathetic, more able to share who we are with the world. And when we continually do this throughout our lives, starting at the time that we're children, we don't have to reinvent ourselves because we develop the proper mindset from the beginning. Right. Okay, so um, I completely agree with everything that you're just saying right now. So from let's talk about a specific example. So now, knowing what you know now and what you teach, how do you view that incident that you went through as a kid? How does mm -hmm. that make you see that in a different light? It, it was a huge gift to me that I didn't realize at the time, and I'll tell you why. On a couple of levels. The first level was I had made up that these kids were mean and cruel and that I was insignificant and the world was a dangerous place. And that was clearly not an interpretation that supported me. First of all, these kids were just good kids. They were teens. They you know, didn't know their own strength. They were playing with me. I was five years old. They thought that they'd goof around and have fun with this little kid, right? And when I fell and somebody dropped me and I hit my head on the concrete, it was an accident. They didn't mean it. They felt really bad, as a matter of fact. I remember them apologizing to my parents about it when my mother basically read them the riot act and said, you know, you don't treat little kids like that. So my interpretation now was it was unintentional. They did the best they knew how based upon how they saw the world. And they saw the world as having fun and playing with this little kid who was down at the schoolyard. 
The other thing that I now had the, the, the great ability to realize was that the, my whole ability to live as an inspiration to myself and to others when I was not for 36 years came out of this experience. So all of my research, all of my work with people, all of the, what I contribute into the world now wouldn't have been possible had I not had the empathy, the experience to teach me what was necessary to empower kids because I would, just wouldn't have had anywhere near the understanding that it was necessary or the ability to put myself into a child's shoes and what is it like for a child who's bullied? What's it like for a child who doesn't feel good about who they are? What's it like for a child who's a social outcast? And all of those things wouldn't have been ex wouldn't I couldn't have experienced them without that initial episode. So I'm very clear that God, the universe, however you want to hold it, said, okay, you want to impact people's lives, you need to have this experience. And that was such a great experience for me because now I can empathize, now I can relate, now I can know what it's like to be on the other side of the fence, so to speak, and I can also know what it's like to have a little pity party for yourself. I can know what it's like to be addicted to anger. I know what it's like to be addicted to fear. You know, 24% of women and 16% of men are addicted to fear. They'll create situations in their lives where they are on edge, where they worry about everything. If you look at the world, you'll see that most of the world is addicted to anger. The whole chaotic state of our world is such because people are out to get others before they get them. They're out to control and dominate rather than be controlled or dominated. And it's the same with sadness. 350 million people are addicted to sadness to the extent that their brain chemistry changes. So if we can identify how we're wired, how we're run, and we can realize that it's not the way it is, it is how we've made it be, how we've interpreted life, we can now flip the switch, so to speak. So it doesn't take 10 years. It can take one aha moment, one breakthrough moment where we realize, oh, you know what? What I made up about myself and others in the world isn't so. That was an interpretation that doesn't support me, and here's a new one that does. And when we can create that new interpretation that we're powerful, that we're effective, that we're loved, that we're loving, that we're a contributor, that we belong, whatever that is for the child or the adult, our reality shifts. And now it allows someone to go from an extreme introvert, social misfit, an outcast, to someone now, I love people, I love being with people. Why? Because my reality has shifted. It's different. I'm no longer at the effect of something I made up when I was five years old. And we all have that ability to reinvent ourselves or to manage our interpretations and the way we see the world from the start so that we don't have to go through that later on in life. Yeah. I mean, what you're doing is empowering people with choice rather than just this um, reacting, you know, from the programs and reacting automatically right. uh, without any kind of a choice and not in a way that's empowering to us. You're giving people the choice to be able to go, you know what? I choose something different and I choose to change my life around and I choose to make different choices mm -hmm. um, because now you have the tools to do that. And I, and I know you've been doing this work. How long have you been doing this work, Joe? You've been doing it for a while. 23 years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, you are the expert out there on, on self-esteem. And, and so how are you working with the kids? Are you doing this online? Are you going into schools? Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was working one-on-one -on -one with adults and with children for a number of years. And what I realized, Natalie, uh, through working with my coach, was I had this vision of impacting the lives of 20 million children and 20 million adults. And I realized it wasn't going to happen with just me doing everything. But one of my gifts, which I realized that I didn't know that I had, was the gift of being able to create structures to teach people to win in life. And one of those structures that I've created is a program that teaches adults about 31 core principles to impact children's lives. And I've created a program with videos and audios and uh, ebooks and an exam. And so half the people that take the program are parents or grandparents or people that just want to impact kids in their family or that they love. The other half are people that want to be certified by my company, the Center for Personal Reinvention, as self-esteem elevation coaches for children or adults. And so we teach the, pro the same principles that I've used and taught and learned myself over the course of those 23 years to people so that 
they can learn the principle, they can do exercises so that they become real for them, and now they can go out into the world as a certified self-esteem elevation coach for children or adults and teach those, those programs. So what we're finding, Natalie, is that coaches and teachers and parents and grandparents and people that want to impact kids and adults, they're learning the principles, they're going out and they're spreading them at the, the boys and the girls clubs, at the churches and the synagogues, at the schools, on the soccer fields, in their own families, with their grandchildren, with their nieces and nephews. They're taking the principles and they're changing lives. And so we're able to realize, I'm able to realize my vision of impacting all of these people by el eliciting a legion of light bearers, so to speak, who are going out into the world and making a difference for kids. Yeah, awesome. Now, guys, if you click on the banner to the side of this video, or if you're on the app, you'll, I think the banner is actually below the video, you'll go through to, uh, to, to Joe's website. So what are they going to find when they go to the Joe? Well, they'll find, not, first they'll find a free gift that is all about self-esteem elevation. It's an audio called Seven Steps to Soaring Self-Esteem, and it comes with seven mini course lessons where they'll get a different lesson every couple of days or so that they can map onto their lives and their children's lives. Uh, and that's just as a thank you for checking out the program. And the program is one that's been endorsed by many of the luminaries in the world. It's a program that's a self-study program with videos and audios and ebooks and workbooks and programs, exercises that adults can learn to impact the lives of children. And when they learn these, they can impact their own families, they can impact others, they can go and teach, they can be uh, paid and do this as a living as a certified self-esteem elevation coach. Uh, so many teachers are teaching these principles in their classrooms. One, one of uh, my students was just nominated as teacher of the year because of these principles. Because this is something unfortunately that's not taught in schools. You know, we are not seeing the forest for the trees oftentimes when we get kids to believe in themselves, when we get them to think win-win and think contribution as opposed to give me because there's scarcity in the world. There's no scarcity. There's nothing but abundance. There's nothing but love and contribution if you see the world that way. And if you see the world as poverty and as scarce and, and anger and all the rest, that becomes your reality. And so you wonder why kids are going to drugs or alcohol or violence or bullying or all of the bad things that we don't want in the world. It's because kids don't see that they have any choices. This program lets kids know that you have a decision moment by moment to make where you can either honor your commitments and you get clarity about what you're committed to most in life or you do what's convenient. And life becomes a simple question of differentiating in the moment of choice, the fork in the road, am I more committed to what's convenient or am, am I more committed to what I'm committed to right now in the moment. And when we can show kids that their life will be empowered by choosing their commitments and getting clarity around what's most important to them in their lives to be the person that they've decided to be. It makes growing up easy because everything is decided by getting clarity on what's important to you in life. Absolutely. And so kids are empowered and, and they share that empowerment with others which is part of the program. They make others great. They leave others better than they found them. So it's, it's a it's a win-win program for everyone. Perfect. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for joining me today. We, we've run out of time, um, but uh, you know the program that you're doing and the work that you're doing is so important and so needed right now. So I want to thank you for everything that you do and thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for inspiring us all, Natalie, and great being with you again. Awesome. Now, guys, I encourage you to share this video. You can do that by clicking the Facebook and the Twitter share buttons on this page. Uh, also, download the app if you haven't done so already so you can watch the shows on the go. Um, and make sure that you leave your email in the box on this page because I would love to send you the Manifesting with the Masters video e-course. It's actually valued at $87 and I'd love to send it to you for free. So until next time, remember to live large, choose courageously and love without limits. We'll see you soon. Thank you.